All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing measurement, data, display, and interpretation with C3 measure occurrence. Occurrence just means how many times the behavior occurred. So we're going to be thinking about frequency and rate. Now what we're going to try to, what I'm going to try to do is avoid just belaboring this idea. It's the simplest type of measurement, but the main issue people have is distinguishing between what is frequency, what is rate, and when do we use those. So that's what really we're going to focus on. As always, please subscribe so you get all of our updates, including every BCBA task list video. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com, including our combo pack. We have all of our study materials available. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's keep going. So let's start with what is measuring occurrence. We are tracking how often a behavior happens. It's that simple. So a behavior happens once, our occurrence is once. And with occurrence, we can get that quantitative data about the presence and frequency of behavior. Now, typically this is going to be a continuous measurement. You're going to track every single time a behavior happens. So when someone says, well, how many times did the behavior occur? you can now tell them. That's what measuring occurrence is all about. And you wanna look for how many when thinking about occurrence, right? When we think about time, and we're gonna to get to time, we're gonna look at how long. With occurrence, we're thinking how many. You also want behaviors with clear beginnings and clear ends. If the behavior is ambiguous or it's unclear when it starts and stops, then collecting occurrence data can be difficult. We're going to be using count, which is our frequency, and rate, which is just frequency over time. You can also use percent occurrence, which is very similar to count. Let's start with frequency. It's probably the easiest measurement we have, the easiest, easiest measurement to understand. If you can count, you can take frequency data. It's just a count or a tally of how many, there's that keyword again, times a behavior occurred during a specific period. How many times did it happen today, right? How many times did it happen last hour? Now, this is where people get confused. With frequency, we're not yet calculating that rate. We're just calculating the count, right? We haven't added time yet. So when do we use frequency? Well, we can use it when the observation period is consistent across all data collection sessions. And that's pretty key. We need however long our observation, whether it's 30 minutes, two hours, seven hours, whatever it is, we want it consistent. Because if you have a count, if I count 20 yesterday and I count 30 today, well, if I observed for five hours yesterday and four hours today, how do we compare those frequencies? You can't, right? So you want the observation period consistent if you're just going to use a count. We also want the opportunity for behavior to occur to be constant. So behaviors that don't happen a lot, right, or infrequently, you might want to avoid using just frequency. And then you want to you or you can use frequency when you're comparing behaviors across identical time frames or settings. In other words, when you're going to use frequency is if things are very uniform, right? The observation time is the same, behavior tends to happen at the same time every day, you're comparing behavior across identical settings. You want everything to be very, very uniform and same if you're going to use frequency. Now, frequency is not hard to understand. It's a count, so how many times a student raises their hand, how many times a learner falls out of the chair in an hour. Now, notice that we're not saying per hour, our observation times an hour, but if we were recording frequency, that number would just be 20 times or whatever it is, right? We have not added the time component yet. Limitation, a tally does not provide a complete picture, especially if observation time varies. You're not gonna get a lot, of, a lot of information from frequency. If you say, how many times the student raised their hand and I say 10, well, you know it happened 10 times, but it's no, there's no other information. How do you compare that? How do you really make a judgment call or assess that number? That's where rate comes in. Rate is, is a more advanced way to think about the occurrence of behavior. We're taking that frequency, but we're now adding a time component, right? 
So we're taking total count of behavior, let's say 10, dividing it by total time of observation, let's say one hour. And so our rate would be 10 times per hour. Instead of just having 10, we now have context as far as time goes. It's typically preferred over just a count when possible. It gives you more information. It allows for a more complete pic picture and allows for better comparisons across different sessions because it's easier to compare 10 times per hour to 20 times per hour versus just comparing 10 and 20 without context. So for example, a student raises their hand 10 times during a 30 minute lesson. Our rate is going to be frequency over time which gives us our rate of 0.33 per minute. We've covered frequency, we've covered rate. Let's compare them, right? Frequency and rate. In practice, you're going to hear them used interchangeably a lot. There are some people who even might say they're the same thing, but they're not the same thing. As a BCBA, you have to stop thinking of these as the same. They're not. Rate is often better than just count, right? Rate is just more complete it's going to give a more clear picture compare five instances versus five instances per minute or compare five if we're, if we're making a comparison if i compare five instances versus five instances well what does that tell you not a lot if i say behavior happens once per minute versus five times per minute that's a much better comparison or five times per hour versus five times per minute right that's giving you a lot more information than just saying well, what happened five times here and five times here. It can also provide a measure of fluency, which is very important in skill acquisition. Now, when is count okay to use? Because sometimes a count is fine, right? And a count is very easy. It doesn't take a lot of resources. It can be done pretty much anywhere. If your observation time is always the same, so let's say you always have a two-hour session, then just count it up. Right. And later you can even convert that to rate if you choose or when comparing the number of opportunities, such as the number of correct answers out of 10 math problems. So if we're trying to find a percentage correct and we have 10 total math problems and we have five learners and we're just trying to figure out, OK, each of them had 10 opportunities to get it correct. How many did each get correct? We can use a count. It's pretty straightforward. Right. So rate, yes, is often better than just a count but count is still viable. Finally, what to consider when we're measuring occurrence. We want a clear operational definition, just like anything. If we want to measure accurately, validly, and reliably, we need to know what we're measuring. We've got to measure the same thing over and over and over and over again. We want a discrete behavior, clear beginning and end, because we are going to be counting that behavior. Whether you're just using frequency or you're using rate, you still have to count the behavior consistently. Use the right tool. So use a clicker or tally marks. Don't just rely on counting in your head. Use an actual tool. And then occurrence is often a continuous measurement. So when we're thinking continuous versus discontinuous, rate and frequency are both types of continuous measurements. And that's it. Like I said, I did not want to harp on this too much because it's not worth getting confused over. The main things you want to know. Why is frequency and rate why are they different? And when would I use count versus when would I use a rate? And then, of course, how to calculate rate. We'll be back shortly with C4 and continue through this playlist as we go through the entire task list as quickly as we can. Be sure to subscribe to get all of those videos. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard. Study hard.